God's word, I said. I'm reading the book right now. The supplanted me finishing Saddam Hussein's uh, Rise to Power book and how it applies to things. It doesn't apply to things. It was written in 1990 before even we went over there. It was, it was what was being seen about the Iraq expedition thing. It's explaining Kuwait, their relations in Iran and, and Israel and Egypt. It's, they're fighting for something over there. You say, Jesus, man, why can't they just get along? Well, go to work in a factory and wonder why the whole world can't get along. You can't even get along in a factory. How do you expect this whole thing to work? So I, I actually, I brought that out to talk about inflation one day. I think it was. And I never got around to it, so I never went in, back into the bathroom where I read in the toilet. So I got, this book was sitting in there. I, I never look for books, they find me. And it, it's by Richard Bach. Not Richard Bachman. Richard Bachman was Stephen King's pseudonym, which I believe uh, the dark half, George Stark, was based upon that character. But this is Richard Bach. And it's called One. And I came across three of these books, and I think I seem to have the most important one because John Siegel's in there still somewhere. Uh, and he talks about it in here extensively, not extensively, often enough. It's not unusual. So I started reading this on the toilet. And um, every time I read one of these books, it's weird. Things come around. We come to understand it even before you pick it up in the toilet the next day, the thing that you're going to read about happens. And so that is a secret of good writing. You are able to connect with somebody before they even know you're doing it. In this case, you are connecting with yourself before you know that the author is doing it, connecting with you. It's wonderful. And so look, I, I went and I brought this out. I'm gonna read from it. Um, this page that I read this morning on the toilet that caught my eye. I mean, it, it uh, every day on the toilet when I'm reading this book, I feel something special. God's word, I said, empty syllables more powerful than arrows, for no one dares stand against them. How simply the quick grasp power from fools. He looked wide-eyed at me. You speak my words. First turn merciless I went on, shocked at what I was saying. Then claim you're the scourge of God and your armless swell with those, your armies swell with those. Too dim to imagine a loving God, too frightened to challenge an evil one. Shout that God promises, women, oranges, wine, all the gold of Persia when they die with the blood of infidels on their swords. And you have a force that turns city to rubble. To seize power, 
call up God's word. Call up God's word. Usually I say, when people say word, I say verb, because I thought they said call up God's word. I'm like, you fucking weak motherfucker. I say verb. Make something happen. Don't just say it. Shout that God promises women, oranges, wine, all the gold of Persia when they die with the blood of infidels on their swords. And you have a force that turns cities to rubble. To seize power, call up God's word. For that word best shifts fear to rage at any enemy you choose. We stared at each other, Attila and I. They were his words. They had also been mine. He knew it, and so did I. It goes on to talk about how easy it is to turn religions against each other based on one angry man. It doesn't say that, but that's, that's how I perceive it based on one tantrum-ridden child of a man that is not unable to decide what is best in life. Is it... Uh, what is best in life? some kind of horse, some kind of something, and a falcon on your wrist. And wrong, they say. And he, he says, you know who I'm talking about, to kill your enemies, to see them driven before you, and know the lamentation of their women. Every time I read something of this, and I didn't read what I wanted to, but it was a page I remembered, and it's what I wanted to read to you. There's so many things in here I wanted to read to you that it can't hurt to read the one you didn't mean to. Um, I don't know how serious this guy is, how scientific, how anything, how fictional, but it seems whatever he writes, well, it seems to make sense. Know your enemy and keep him out of your wife's bedroom.